Hello everybody, I'm gonna be reading the story and this one is called The Mitten by Elvin Tristelso. Is that right? Pronouncing your last name wrong? <laughs> it was the coldest day of winter, a and a little boy was struggling through the forest, gathering firewood for his grandmother. Bring back all you can find," said the old woman. "said as she sat knitting a pair of mittens." North, the north wind blowed cold, blows cold, and we must have a good fire to keep us warm. All morning, the boy worked picking up sticks until the sled was loaded. Then, very strange thing happened. Just as he picked up the last stick he had dropped one of his mittens in the snow now the boy could do this on the coldest day of winter i'll never know but the that's the way my grand grandfather tells the story off he went with his loaded of wood the mitten was left laying on a snow drift. As soon as he went out of sight, a, a little mouse came circling cir cir through the woods. She was very cold, and when she spot spot the little boy's mitten with furry fur cuffs. She popped right in to get warm. It was it was just right, right just the right size for the tiny mouse. Later a green frog came hopping hip hopping over the snow. Anybody home? she asked. She saw the mitten. Only me, said the mouse. Come in quickly before you freeze. They had no sooner settled themselves snugly, snugly in the red wool linen when an owl flew down. May I join you in the lovely mitten? he asked. If you mind your my manners, said the mouse, for the owl made her nervous, the, and it wiggled around too much, added the frog, because it was a bit, a bit tight in here. It wasn't long before a rabbit came down the forest path. Is there enough room for me in that nice warm mitten? Asked the rabbit. It's awfully cold out here. Not much space, said the mouse, the frog and owl. But come in. We'll do what we we'll do what we can do. Even before the rabbit had gotten herself tucked in, a fox came up to the mitten. After a good deal of trouble, she gave herself along with the others. The m mouse was uh, beginning to think. Maybe she should have been so generous, but the bitter wind outside, what else could she do? And now... As if things weren't bad enough, the next visitor was a great, big gray wolf who wanted to come in too. I don't know how we'll manage it, said the, said the mouse, but we'll try. Everyone moved around a bit and finally the wolf 
was squeezed into the mitten. It was very crowded, but now at least it was warm. Things had just gotten arranged nicely when animals heard the great snort, snorting. It was a wild boar, and he was very anxious to get in, get out of the wild. Oh dear! Cried the mouse for the, for the mitten. It has already begun to stretch a little. We don't have any more room. I'll be very careful," said the boar. With the, with his, but scrunched himself into the mitten along with the mouse, and the frog, and the owl, and the rabbit, the fox, and the wolf. I know this is so because my grandfather grandfather told me. But the worst was yet to come. For who, for who should appear now but a bear? No room, no room! Cried the animals. Before the bear had had a chance to speak. Nonsense, said the bear. There's always room for one more. Without much as a please or a thank you, he began to crawling. He began crawling into the mitten. He put his paw first, and the mitten crack creaked and groaned. He put his other paw in. One seemed to pop. Then he took a big breath and pushed himself in. Now, while all things are was going, along comes a black cricket, little cricket. She was very old. She and she her crick, creaky legs ached in, with the cold. When she saw the mitten, she had she said to herself, "Now that looks like a warm place. I'll just hop over there if I can squeeze in too." But ah uh, me, that's all that was needed to finish the poor off the poor old mitten. The cricket cricket had no more than to put her first scratchy foot inside when with a rip and a snap the stitches came apart the old leather cracked and the soft red linen linen split in half popping all the animals into the snow well at the very moment the boy discovered that his he had only one mitten. Back, he went where he might have dropped the other one, but he could find where the rip ripped apart in pieces. He brought thought it was a little the mouse scur scurrying away with a bit red wool perch on his her head. It looked a lot like the linning. From the thumb that had been missing. Oh well, said the boy, as he snuggled around his hand inside his coat. My grandmother will surely have my new mittens finished by now. Then he hurried home with the north wind nippling, nipping at his cheeks. And grandmother says he never did know what really happened to his mitten. The end.